Hey guys, what's up? Matt Young here from Magic at Squidoo, here with the very first of our videos. Today I'm going to do a review of the Bicycle Blue Masters deck, and I'm going to teach you how to do a trick with the deck, which you can only do with this deck or another deck from eillusionist.com. So I uh, hope you enjoy it and stay tuned to learn a great, easy magic trick that will really amaze your friends. I've got the uh, the Bicycle Blue Masters deck here. You can see my box is a little warm because I've, I've had it for uh, almost a month now and um, been using it on and off. It's a very nice deck. Um, the main difference about the box is you can see the front, you know, the sides. It's just got the little um, little gold and blue strips and then it's got this the card design on the back, which looks just like the regular blue deck from Bicycle, the ordinary blue deck, but uh, you'll see in a minute that there is one main difference that completely distinguishes this away from the rest. Um, I really like this front. It's really neat. It's got the uh, the Masters Edition on her back. It's got, this is actually the Ace design here on the front, which is what really sets it apart from other bicycle decks. If you look on the top, it's got a uh, poker card letting you know that this uh, can be used for poker. It's, you know, poker you know, it's uh, set up for poker by the rules and everything. Then it's got the uh, the illusionist symbol there, right? Um, so I'm letting you know that this was mainly designed by illusionist. Uh, it is UV 500 airflow finished. Um, honestly, I really don't know what what the difference between that and the normal airflow finish is, but um, I have noticed these cards are a lot easier to handle. And they're a lot smoother doing fans and whatnot, and I'm suspecting that that has something to do with the UV 500 airflow finish. Uh, look through, I'm gonna show you the Ace of Spades. Like I said, it's the main thing that really sets it apart. We got the Jokers there; they're ordinary Jokers from a from a normal bicycle deck. Here's your Ace of Spades. I don't know who designed this, but uh, whoever did, um, wow, hats off to them. It's a really amazing design. Uh, it's very ornate, uh, especially inside the spade. Uh, so, really nice spade design. It's really cool. Uh, other than that, all of the cards are exactly the same. Aside from, like I said, the UV 500 airflow finish as a normal bicycle deck. So... It's not that much different. Um, let me make sure I got the jokers out and all before I teach you this trick, okay? So, basically, the way this trick works is it's a trick you do with the box. Now, most people say, well, gee, you know, you're going to do a trick with the box. That's weird because, you know, usually when somebody says, I want to show you a card trick, they're, they're going to show you a trick with the cards, right? Well, this involves both, and so it kind of sets most tricks, most card tricks apart. It's, it's a neat little thing. Now, um, Illusionist is very famous for their barcode reveals, and you may not know what that is, but you're about to. If you look on the, um, on the uh, barcode here, it says, you can see it says, Seven of Spades, and it's got some numbers and letters mixed in there and everything. But for the most part, you can read it, it says Seven of Spades. I'll show you how you use that. Now, if you don't know what a force is, well, I'm going to teach you, okay? Start with, let me uh, let me go ahead and just show you the trick. And uh, then I'm going to teach you how it's done, okay? So basically, we got the seven of spades here. Like I said, I'm going to show you. But um, here's what we're going to do. So, I'm just going to say stop when you're ready. But since nobody's here to say stop, I'll just go ahead and say stop right there say Alright, so that's going to be your card, okay? Got it? It's lost in the deck. Shuffle the deck a couple times, just shuffle it a little, right? 
Okay, so basically, I've been getting okay. This has been pretty good. I'm going to try and um, and look through the deck, and without even looking at the face of the card, I'm gonna try and find your card. So let's just see if I can do it. Let's see here. Um, I think it might be this card here. Let's see. Is that your card, the, the Queen of Clubs? No. Um, let me try again. How about the Six of Hearts? No? Alright. You know, some people say third time's the charm. So let me try third time's the charm. You know, maybe. Just maybe it'll work this time. How about the Nine of Hearts? Is that it? Oh, that's, no, that's not good. Tell you what, you know, I've found that sometimes the box, the card box, is actually smarter than the, um, than the actual cards themselves. And, uh, I'm gonna see if I can prove that to you. Um... I'm just going to ask you to just examine the box as much as you like and then say turn and I'll rotate it. Turn? Alright. This side. Not much. It's kind of odd. You know, not, not much odd about it. Turn. Okay. Turn. Okay. Turn. Top. You already saw that. Turn. The bottom. Examine the bottom real closely. Now, usually about nine times out of ten, I've found they'll examine it and they won't find the reveal, and you'll have to point it out to them. But once they see it, well, they're always awestruck. And then, of course, you just show them the seven of spades reveal on the bottom, and continue on and accept your applause or their laughing, smiling, whatever they they give you in return. Usually, uh, usually I get very, very good reviews for and uh, reactions from this trick. So here's how it's done. Uh, all you have to do is you have to have the seven of spades in a certain position. Now, which force you want to use is what determines that position. Right? Now, my favorite force is called the Hindu shuffle. Not sure if you know what that is. If you're new to magic don't know what that is, I'll teach you. If you do, well, then you're a step ahead of the game. Hindu shuffle is a popular force. And the whole idea is you have the card that you want to make sure they take on the bottom, okay? And all you're doing when you're forcing a card is you're making sure that they take that card. And it helps you in the trick, in the trick later, right? So, um, in the Hindu Shuffle, you just have their card that you want to make sure they have, which in this case is the Seven of Spades on the bottom, right? The Hindu Shuffle is not hard at all. Um, I don't know about the angle I've got here. I'll try and make it a little easier. But the, basically, you're going to hold it. In your left hand like this, right? And you're gonna t you're gonna grab take your um your left or your right forefinger and your right thumb as I'm doing it. And you're gonna grab your little packets off the car off the top, right? You're just kinda gonna let them fall into this hand like so, right? You're just kinda just kinda grab them and pull them off. Do it fast, okay? Thing is though, do it do it as few cards as at a time as you can because you'll soon find that you're getting close to the bottom. And then if you grab that bottom card and you put it on top, oh, well, you're going to be messed up. You're going to be run, right? Boom. So you got to make sure that you do as few cards at a time as you can without making it look suspicious. And you just ask the spectator to stay stall. And that's the force that I used a second ago, right? Right? Um, and then you can just stay, stay stall and they, you just hold them up like that and slash your card. Put it there. Say okay. They're already lost in the packet. Then at this point, you can you can shuffle the cards. Where I found that it's more powerful if you'll uh, if you'll hand the deck to your spectator and ask them to shuffle them. Right. Um. So after that, you uh, you look through. You know, you say, "How about how about this card here?" Right. Um. And you can be sure when you do it, you kind of like tilt it up like this, like kind of look at it yourself first before they see it, because you never know. There's a 1 in 52 chance that you might actually get the 7 of spades. So you want to make sure you don't want to kind of look at it first to make sure it's not. And then flip it on over and say, how about that card, right? Um, then, uh, I'm sure you could follow from there. You just go on through. Uh, you could find however many cards you like. I did three for three times the charm. Kind of pulling a, 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 an old saying in there, you know. Uh, it kind of keeps people interested when you pull stuff like that in. Make it a story, really. This trick, I've had trouble. I've been trying to come up with the story, and that's the best I can do. If you can do better, more power to you, because uh, I can't come up with a really good story for this. So, um, anyway, the other 
force that I was going to tell you about. It's called the crisscross force, and it is probably the oldest force out there, except for the classic force, which uh, I never could quite do. But that's okay, because you don't have to be able to do everything to be able to do magic. So if there's ever something you you usually you can't figure out, there's usually an alternative, right? So the crisscross force consists of putting the card you want to force them, in this case the seven of spades, on the top of the deck, right? So after you get that on top, you're gonna just kind of do a riffle. You can either do a riffle this way, or it's a little bit easier to do a riffle this way. I don't recommend doing a riffle this way until you've gotten really good with cards. Do you practice a lot? So just to start off, if you're just practicing or you're doing it for your family and friends, I recommend doing it this way. It's a lot of simpler. It may not be as clean, but hey, it takes practice to be a magician. That's the biggest thing. It's practice, practice, practice. To get it just perfect so that nobody can tell your flaws, right? So you're just gonna do like this, you can say stop. Now okay, your spectator will say stop right there. Here is the geniusness. People aren't paying attention. You're going to take the top half, right, that has the seven of spades on top, right? And you're going to slap it down on the table. So you're just going to go boom, boom. You're going to take that really quickly. The other half, you're going to slap it down across. And I grabbed it wrong. You're going to go like this. And you're going to slap it down across like this, right? So the whole idea, you could do like this. Bam. You're going to say, okay. Now you gotta get, here's the trick. You get the spectator to look up at you, right? Misdirection. They look up at you, takes their thoughts off the cards. They're thinking about you talking now, okay? You say, okay, fair cut, fair cut. You tell me where to stop, we're good, right? And of course they'll say yes. Unless they really focus. Nobody ever knows. You just kind of like this, you can sing, you can even place it just like, like this. You can say, okay, look. It's the card you cut to. Hold it up, hand it to them, invite them to take it right off. No difference in how you get it to them, but it's always going to be the same space you do it right. Again, you're just going to take the top half, put it on the table, other half, crisscross it, right? Say fair cut. It's your card. I'll pick it up, look at it, and replace the cut. Square up the deck. Ask them to stick it in the deck wherever they like. This force is good because they can stick it in the deck wherever they like, so it makes them, gives them a sense of free choice on where it goes. Whereas the other one, you just you put the top on, you know, and say, okay, it's lost in the deck. But I really think that as far as routine going smoothly goes, I think that the Hindu Shuffle works better. And that is how you do the trick with the Blue Masters deck using the box reveal. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I uh, enjoy doing magic. It's one of my hobbies and um, I'm happy to be able to uh, share my hobby and teach you how to do it as well. I hope you uh, learn more from this website uh, and I hope that uh, you will leave your comments at the bottom so that I can know what you think and if there's any tricks you'd like to learn um, or any questions, comments, anything of that sort, just post them at the bottom of the page in the, in the comments link, or um, email me at uh, magic at squidoo at gmail.com. That's M-A-G-I-C-A-T-S-Q-U-I-D-O-O. -O. And uh, I certainly hope to uh, hear more from you guys that are uh, watching these videos, and I, um, I hope you definitely enjoy the videos. I'm Matt Young, and I'll see you next time.